Hello and welcome. This is Gunjo Carl. We've got a fun one for you today. It's the moon and back speed run where you start in career mode, land on the moon, and get back home as fast as possible. Right out the gate, we're going to start by taking the first two little missions, and bizarrely, mostly for the tiny science games they give us on completion. Um, following that up, there's this little craft design to make a really short hop, as short as possible, and so that's what those extra boosters are there for. What was that click? Oh, I think I clicked out of the box. Um, anyways, you'll see that there's a bunch of mystery goo containers on here. There's going to be one cute little glitch where if you open it up on the ground and uh, it finishes opening while it's in the air, you get the shore sign. So a little bit of extra there and <laughs> already done. Um, so the objective there is to get it to hop as low as possible while still being able to click all the buttons. I think that's about as low as I'm going to be going. Uh, next up, we're not actually going to do these missions, but um, their advance gives us just enough to get the launch pad. So, big rockets, here we come. Um, if you've seen some of my earlier speedruns, this rocket might look a little familiar. It's pretty much the one that I've got in the all-flag speedrun, and oh, it works great. Um, it's a version 1.05 exclusive, though, because I tuned down the exhaust damage in 1.1. Well. I admit, I like not having my rockets get cleaved in half by Separatrons, but this sort of thing's got to be missed. So you'll notice um, that it's built primarily out of these back boosters, and they're here in a um, 13, 7, and 3. Uh, there's the offset ones on the second stage, and those um, burn on the first stage, but on the second stage they act as tail fins. Uh, just took care of staging for the very first stage right now, and there that goes. Now it's time to take care of the rest of the mid-flight. <laughs> Sometimes if I misplace one of the boosters, this can be a lot more exciting because I'll be trying to guide the rocket while uh, getting the staging together, but this was nice and easy. Um, you'll also, you might have noticed that it came pre-tilted in the very beginning, and that kind of set up this nice lazy gravity turn on its way up. This is going to drop us off at a very specific angle, which we're going to try and force using the maneuverability of this final stage here. We want it to be right on 25 degrees and with any luck not too much north or south. And because this rocket always burns for the same amount of time, if we wind up right there, then we'll be um, on a perfect little path to make it to the moon. Um, now, if I'm a degree higher, degree low, I can alter the apoapsis here, and that will change where we're going to wind up landing on the moon. So away we go, and we should be landing on the sunny side. There it is. And in we go. So, um, one of the things you also might have noticed, I learned to face retrograde back on Kerbin. Because <laughs> I'm always getting in a little bit too close with these suicide burns. And speaking of suicide burns, um, I crash probably about one in two. This one is the closest I ever got uh, without crashing. And you'll see I get a little nervous here at the bottom. I'm like sitting there right above the ground. I do a little bit of a shimmy and dance just before landing. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Bonk. There it is. All right. So that is officially landing on the moon. Um, we got the little, um, a little first, Kerbin's first award for it. So that's all they wanted. So for coming back home, we don't have any heat shields. So the only way we're going to do it is with a glitch. Um, and in order to set up that glitch, we need to have the astronaut complex. So head back to KSC, buy the astronaut complex. Um, now we're just going to set up getting back home and set up the periapsis as low as possible by controlling the angle that you start the blast off from the moon you can get everything set up pretty nicely beforehand and um, with the ending periapsis at 500 i'm definitely pushing my luck on this one i could feel that i was going fast i didn't think i was going fast enough to break my earlier records but um so i wanted to push my luck it turns out i was going quicker than i thought so here comes that glitch. Uh, we had already dropped Jeb out of his capsule, so he's just free-floating. Um, I managed to not shoot past uh, Kerbin and do a merry-go-round at time warp, and boom, there he goes. Splash down, recover Jeb. That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> and that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. 
Um, I might be putting out more of this sort of thing in the future. There's still uh, a lot of lead in this. There's a few places where I make some kind of slow and weasley little mistakes. So I'm hoping that um, maybe some other people can capitalize that on that and, uh, <laughs> and grab this record. Good luck. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one.